Welcome back to the channel everyone. We have a special delivery coming today. So I've got the trailer on the truck. I'll be heading into town with the tractor. We are meeting a semi and town is only one mile that way. So it's a lot easier for the driver if we just, you know, go out of our way a little bit to meet him where he's got an easy in, easy out. And he doesn't have to come a mile out of town here to go another 10 miles to be able to turn around. Let's get going. So let me give you the tour. This is the thriving metropolis. We're in beautiful downtown right now. And on the other side of the railroad tracks is beautiful uptown. You've seen it all. Here comes Senior with my truck and trailer. We'll be offloading the cargo onto that. And here's the truck.
Okay, everybody. I knew I'd bought some stuff, but I I see now why this pallet was listed as 1,900 pounds. We had a little bit of trouble because that's rated for about 1,600 pounds. So as you saw, I had to give it a little bit of an assist. But this is the last pallet shipment ever from Floor and Tractor Parts in Sacramento, California. They are basically done, closed now. And I had quite a few things on my list. Um, we've been working for roughly a year, just going through old inventory, and I knew I was getting all the sheet metal from D2 5J number 870. That is where the, um, the tank and the fenders and the fender tank and the dash came from. But I had quite a few other items on my list, but not, not everything I've been finding so far. Uh, they pack the whole center section of this full. <laughs> the toolbox is even full. And these boxes were unexpected. This big box at the front, I we're just going to have to see what's in this. I'm not sure, but... Wow. Cat tools. And cat tools. And more cat tools. And look at that. New old stock track bolts. Wow, more tools down there. I don't even know what's in here. Some binders. Okay, we we're gonna be offloading for a while. <laughs> All right, it took a few minutes, but we got everything unloaded. So the obvious, everything needed to set a D2 up with the fender tank configuration. Dash in place, spare starting engine gas tank. We've got, this was a surprise, a really nice looking set of undercarriage recoil springs with good adjuster threads left on them both, good bolts. We've got the bottom roller guards, inner and outer, and a pretty decent J-series hood. And now, the smalls. It even spills off the bench onto the floor. And this isn't even all of it, but it hits the high points. Uh, we're gonna be here forever if we don't do this fast. Uh, the cast steel, the early grader, Wrenches, all right, double box and several of those wall hangers. I've even got one up there. Uh, hit me up if you guys see anything because I'm not going to need all this stuff. Um, we've got the square plug wrenches. We have the uh, the greater moldboard scraper with the square drive plug wrench end on them. We've got the 3B5861. I found these in the parts uh, book for toolkits for D2 on up through D6, D7, D8. It's fuel pump cap wrench is what it's listed as. These 9F1496s, they're an inch and five eighths. I've seen these two before. It slips my mind right now what exactly they're for. Maybe like a water pump packing wrench. More earlier water pump packing wrenches, 4A774s. Um, the injector wrenches, all right? We've got six of them here. Two of them are still mummified in Cosmoline. Uh, I'm not gonna need all those, hit me up. Um, NOS. This is early first generation Caterpillar D2 track adjusting nuts that have not had the slits put in them. These are the first style, oops, originals. Two of them, never been used. I, and I was one short for 1113. One of these might go on to there. Uh, these are all D3400 D2 inner valve springs, quantity four per box. We've got six boxes here. Oh man, spring inner valve quantity four and COD Chillwell, November 11th, 1953, on all of them. I'm sure they're cosmoleaned up. We've got these uh, little louvered magneto side panels for the larger Eisman mags. Um, bought a dozen of them right there. NOS light switch for the dash. This is the good stuff right here. It's uh, electric starter for pony motor, six volt. The push button contact but it's the good old style. We're not talking about the stamp tin cheapies with the light duty copper on the inside. Oh, this is this is the OG original stuff here. This is a really handy box to have another military tag. The date is September 19th, 1947, 2B3705. These are the diamond cut copper pre-combustion chamber, early press in pre-combustion chamber lower seals. All right, they're a diamond cut profile. They're not a round. Um, these are actually a bit hard to find, and I bet we've got 30 of them here, probably more. 
Really love to see that. That could be very, very handy when you start working on our D6s. And another military surplus find. So we've got this and this. Uh, it's all the same type of piston. There's seven of them here total. And old military tag. Checked NSD Guam. 11 of 1955. And this is a 2F3666 piston. And they're all wrapped in the Cosmoline. These four are the same. And what throws me though, they're like a three and five eighths bore. And I can't find anything in my literature that lists a three and five eighths bore for a cat. But it's definitely, it's got the cat wing style piston pin plug provision. They all do, all seven of them. So if anybody can run this uh, 2F3666 number, I would definitely appreciate it. I want to know what those are for. And another mystery is this uh, 2F3663 piston. Now these are, I believe, about a three and three quarter border for a gas engine, March 1950. And these are, they've got the good tar cosmoline on, but they're like, they're like brand new. And you can see the number up there, 2F3663. So, also, what are those 2F3663s for? I'm thinking maybe PV Series Cat 15. Uh, if anybody has a, uh, an interchange cross-reference, I'd love to know. Several of the main clutch release bearing spring-loaded cap oil cups. All right, we're talking D35, Gas 35, RD6, RD7, even up to D8. We've got a couple D3400 pistons back there. Oh, we've got cylinder head nut wrenches. We've got T-handle wrenches. We've got these S1260 wrenches. They look like they're about a three-quarter. We've got, I think it's a fuel pump bleeder wrench. It's all cosmoline up yet. I'll have to dig into that to see exactly what it is. Now we get into torque monster parts, all right? We've got six new old stock 2B4011 RD6 wrist pins, all right? Cosmoline up. Nice and greasy, just the way I like them. We've got two of these RD6 narrow gauge final drive upper pinions. Um, new old stock, never been used. We've got RD6 tappets, RD6 tappet housings because they're held down by those, those clamps up here. Now these four boxes are all outer valve springs for Caterpillar RD6 and I had to just break into this one because I, I wanted to see what it was all about. So we we got through all the Cosmoline paper, three layers on the outside. I think we can put it here. Every layer had these same markings on them. We've got a code 158, part number 1A7784, spring, quantity six per box, February 16th, 1953. So once we got down to the cardboard, we found it's kind of this crushed, oh, I don't even know what it is, kind of a crushed paper. And then again, all the same markings, 2-16-53, all the same data. And each one wrapped up in more Cosmoline paper and covered in more Cosmoline still. Boom, look at that. They're, they're monsters. They're just beautiful. We've got six per box, four boxes. We're sitting pretty good on those for a while. We need to go into the cat book for these now. These are, um, they're called tubular spanner wrenches, all right? Cat uses those for those uh, those slot nuts they put in everything. That's a 4B6093, and I believe the one behind it is the same, 4B6093. Yeah, this one's still in the Cosmoline, but those two are kind of interesting. You go in here, anywhere you find that 6093 number, so we've got transmission upper shaft rear nut. It's used on 9G series D7, D6 tractor 2H, R5 tractor, we've got 50 tractor, and then transmission lower shaft nut. It's also used on the 50 tractor. It's used on some elevating graders. That's a neat deal. The next size down, 3B6780. Again, we've got two of those. That's right here, transmission lower shaft nuts, D4 and R4 tractors. So we've got a couple of those. If I know anybody that does any D4 stuff, I don't know, Kyle Christ. And then, um, 6B6505, you can find that down here. Yeah, right there, we'll fit the starting engine camshaft gear nut on D8 tractors and D13000. RD6 crankshaft, front thrust plates, four of them, RD6 water pump nuts, RD6 final drive pinion bearings. This is a 6B1369 rivet, flywheel clutch segment, bunch of those. 
these are the starting pinion sleeve bolts from D2 and work your way up. More of them than I could ever use. These are RD6 final drive gear bolts, brand new. These thrust washers are uh, 2H series RD6 and D6 uh, track roller and front idlers, all of them. I think there's 40 plus in there. More RD6 final drive bearings, a pair of new Caterpillar NOS never used RD6 steering clutch and brake drums. Um, these I think will come in very, very handy. We've got these packs down here. These are Cosmoline packs. Caterpillar bolts S1476 quantity 12. And one was open just enough to get a look. Oh, yep. They're all nice and sticky in there. Uh, these bolts here, I can't remember the part number. I looked them up last night. Uh, that's the box they were in. Now, these are uh, D2 and D4. Um, on the starting engine, you got the magneto, and where the air cleaner goes up over the top of the magneto, there's a couple spacers, and these a long bolt, two long bolts go down on each side of the magneto, and these are the ones that that air cleaner likes to vibrate, and then they, they always crack off. We got about a half a dozen of them here, all brand new, handy, handy pieces to have. This box was a neat surprise, and I thought I saw, yeah, we've got a uh, camshaft, one each. 8 of 1962 on there. This is a new old stock, still in the crate, still in the Cosmoline. Caterpillar, oh, it's a D311 diesel engine camshaft. So that would be U-Series D2. That would be some of the 212 graders. That would be anything with that D311 D2 engine in. New old stock camshaft right there. So that's the U-Series newer engine D2. This happens to be a D3400 older J-Series D2 and also some 212 grader uh, camshaft. Again, all in that thick Cosmoline coating. Never been used. Down here, these round tins, quantity six, 3B9068, small tap, all right? I finally figured out what those are. So we go into the early first generation 5J1 and on up parts book, we've got the 3B9068 drain cock on the starting engine heads. So these small ones, that's what these are right here. We've got some more loose ones. So we've got six per 10. We've got four 10s right there. We've got a bunch loose here. I bet there's 30 plus. And I did open this one up just to have a look. And sure enough, six of them in there, never been used. Um, these are right, correct, and proper for 5J1113. I don't have these early first-gen small taps and the starting engine heads, so I think we'll be using at least two of these. And next to those, some gigantic bearings and races for number nine auto patrol back end. Differential stuff right there. Speaking of starting engine cylinder heads, we've got a dozen new old stock all wrapped up. Head assembly, starting engine, quality one. I like the way they... Uh, they wrapped some of these. They got that uh, banding around there with some stitching in it and all wrapped up. Greasy, sticky, never been used. And then bolts. They watch my channel enough to know that I just can't refuse a good cat bolt. So these are actually new old stock Caterpillar D2 track pad bolts. And these are the good ones that have the, the body length or the grip length right there. And they're not the downgraded, um, you know, stand-ins that they sell now. Lord, I don't want to do any more track work. I, if anything loosens up, these are going back in. And then the rest of these I just separate out in cans. Three quarter, five eighths, half by 13. A um, bunch of quarter inch stuff in here. Some good fine thread stuff. We've got D2 connecting rods. Uh, these foot pedals, I don't know what they're from. Maybe like a decelerator or accelerator pedal. It looks like your heel would have went down here so that your foot would have would have pivoted it at the top. It's a 3D674, so it's kind of an old number. There's two of them here. I have no idea what they fit. This is known as a, uh, oh, what do they call it? It's right here under connecting rod bolt wrench. A gooseneck box end wrench is used to conveniently remove and install connecting rod bolts when working on installations which have only one side accessible. So this would go in through the side panel. It would actually go under the connecting rod and get to the far connecting rod nut and then you'd put your wrench on it outside and if you're using this you were having one mighty bad day these two pieces here it took me forever to figure out what they're for they're cat tools all right and i did not recognize them but they have a 6b 1575 on them and i found it 
in here, it's this a part of this pre-combustion chamber removing tool. The early three and three quarter bore engine chambers, so the early D2, were not machined to accommodate the simple hex tool that you know removes and installs them. Therefore, a different arrangement is required to remove them. And we've got 6B1575 assembling tool sleeve, and you can see it, it's that portion of it right there. Okay. Um they're they're neat. I don't know what I'd use them for, but then we have this was a heavy-duty nut that has a thrust washer or a thrust bearing in the bottom of it. And the number is a 2B1941. And as long as we're on this page right here, it happens to be a partial piece of this tool. Valve cages and burner tubes, the diesel 70, diesel 65 tractor, and the D9900 power unit. Um, instead of a pre-comp chamber, use a two-piece arrangement, a fuel valve cage, uh, and a burner tube. It's a part of this whole extracting tool right here, 2B1941 nut listed right there. Now this hefty T726, you can see part of the stamping under that heavy blue paint. This is a handy wrench to have as well. It's listed under special end wrenches here, and we go down... T726, it's a 2 and 21 30 seconds opening. It's used on D6, 5E, and 2H series, diesel 40, 40, R5, diesel 35, and 35 tractor for the upper transmission shaft rear nut. It's also found over here for the PL series Cat 20 sprocket shaft outer nut, as well as the 7C series 15, high 15, Cat 10, and high 10 for the bevel gear retaining nut. So, handy wrench to have. And next to the hand cranks and other wrenches is this. It's hefty. It's a 2B1400. You can see the stamping right there. I bet it's better than an inch thick. It is a 6 and 1 16th inch opening. And it is also in here, right here, 2B1400 used on the diesel 75, diesel 70, and 70 tractor sprocket shaft inner nut hex. I don't ever plan on owning any of those tractors, but boy, that is a cool piece. And last, a good selection of literature as well. A couple binders back here with uh, part number interchanges, things like that. This book here is going to be hours and hours worth of entertainment. The Tractor Field Book with Power Farm Equipment Specifications, 1956. You can shop any brand of old tractor. Complete specs. Here's D2s advertised brand new. D4, D6, D9. We've got all kinds of uh, like aftermarket suppliers, um, wheel tractors, cutaways, full specs, garden tractors, lawn mowers, clee track crawlers. There's internationals in here. There's Fords. There's Minneapolis Marines. It's so, uh, it's really something. Oh man, good stuff. Well, I know that was a lot, but this is the last shipment ever from Floor and Tractor that you'll see on the channel. They're basically cleaned out, done, closed up. And I spoke to Dana himself on the phone the other day and he told me that they worked as hard as they could to move as much product to other retailers, other businesses, or to just individuals that could utilize this stuff, use it, keep it around, get something out of it to avoid just throwing it in the dumpster. Uh, Dennis emailed me the other day or today about those bolts. He said, yeah, I just, he said, I couldn't throw them in the scrap bin. I knew you uh, you liked using cat bolts, so I'm like, hey, perfect. I will put them all to good use. And uh, this this pile here is proof. I'll be honest with, with you all, half of this stuff I bet wasn't even on my list. Um, or I received it in quantities greater than what I specified. So Dana, Dennis, y'all, everybody, the whole crew at Florin, from pulling parts out of the yard to parts off of the shelves. Um, like I said, this was about a year long collaboration where I would submit parts list and they would find whatever they could find, start assembling it, creating it up, and it's finally all come to fruition now. So everybody at Florin really went above and beyond. Can't thank you all enough and we will miss you boys. Uh, it's It's been a good run. So uh, everybody, uh, if you leave a thumbs up, don't leave it for me. Leave it for Dana and Dennis and the whole crew at Florin and uh, congrats to uh, retirement and I hope everything went well. Uh, I will utilize this stuff to the best of my abilities and ensure that as much of it as possible also goes out to other like-minded collectors. The goal of this whole thing is preservation and to keep this stuff around. And that's what I intend to do. So it's been a good run. Thank you for watching, everybody.